Hello, and welcome to today's episode of the Authentic Uprising podcast. I'm your host, Jill Simons, and I'm so excited to grow in the radical art of standing in what God says about you with you today. The show is a place where we pour into the sense of who God is, who we are, and how we can live more in the freedom that He has for us every single day. Hello and welcome to today's episode of the Authentic Uprising show. As always, I'm your host, Jill Simons. And even though it seems like we just chatted last week when my episode came out, the last episode of um, 2022, the old year, I had actually completed recording all of those in April of 2022. So it has been a minute since I have recorded a podcast in the time since A lot of things have happened, a lot of things have changed, and I've learned a lot. So I'm going to take this first episode of 2023 to just kind of get back in touch and let you know a little bit about what has been going on both in my life and Pink Salt Riot and what's going to be on the radar for 2023, what we're going to be walking through together this year, um, both at my shop, Pink Salt Riot, but also on the podcast. So to get started in June. June, I welcomed uh, my little boy. His name is Jack, and um, he had an eventful entrance into the world. I'll just maybe leave it at that. Um, through the grace of God, I did not lose my life, even though it seemed like that was a possibility for a moment there. Um, I'm very thankful for the gift of my life now, even more than ever, after having been um, just really close to something really serious happening to me for the first time really in my life. And um, it ushered in kind of the opposite of what I expected to happen happened. A lot of times you hear about people having near-death experiences or something really serious happening in their lives and there being like a new awakening with the Lord and just this closeness that they enter into as a result of that. And what happened for me is I had been in a season of really great closeness and intimacy with the Lord and then I found myself in the aftermath of that, finding it really challenging to pray, finding it really challenging to seek to be intimate with the Lord in the way that I had prior to. And of course, there's, you know, a new child to take care of, a fourth child in my case. So there was a lot of moving pieces, not a lot of sleep. And um, it's just really interesting how it kind of unfolded. And I try and be really transparent about these things because... I think a lot of times it's so easy to idealize what somebody else's experience is, especially someone that we look up to saying, you know, they have a faith maybe that we want to emulate. Um, They have a closeness with God and intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And not that I'm necessarily putting myself in that place, but having a podcast, being someone who speaks about these things, I need to enter into that with a certain level of knowing what I'm talking about. And in doing that, I do put myself out there as someone who is at least very engaged on these topics. And so I want to be equally transparent that this was just a really like long three, four month period of my life where a lot of those things that had been really the hallmark of my interior life were just not there. I was not praying with the regularity that I had been. Um, A lot of times it was really relying heavily on memorized prayers, not a lot of hearing from the Lord. Um, So it was really like just kind of a humbling time and also a really good reminder that we never progress to a place where it's like, oh, now we can kind of just take it easy or, you know, not really pay attention anymore. So similar to what we see in our human relationships, especially our marriages, you can't just have a good marriage for the first five years and kind of ride that for the rest of the time. There is a level of daily interaction that's required to really maintain the intimacy and the closeness of that relationship. And and if you don't, it's not necessarily that you start fighting and everything falls apart. It's just there. there's something that's lost there. There's an intimacy that's possible that you're not stepping into. And that was really my experience 
with the Lord was not that I was like, you know, questioning my faith or having this crisis of faith or anything like that. But there was just stuff I missed out on walking with him, hearing from him about because of that time of just less effort on my part, really, to be quite frank. And so as I began another school year, um, going back, this is the year that I'm completing my degree um, in ministry. And so I was preparing to go back to school and just really trying to re-engage with the Lord as part of that. And so as I was going through the early days of my program and fall semester and stuff, I just had a big fire lit under me to really engage with the Lord at a level that I never even had before. And so that's really where um, I just see God's grace in the story, because even though there was this summer time of kind of challenging away from him time, when I when he brought me back in, when I finally responded to his invitation to come back in, there was this new depth that I had not ever reached before that was just really, really beautiful to step into. And so that led me through a lot of the walk this fall has been um, constantly changing plans, constantly shifting sand, it feels like, just having the logistics of having a child under six months old (laughs) while also working full time and having my children in school. And side note, I can't remember how much, if any, I talked about on the podcast this last year about kind of the struggles with my finding a great school for my son with special needs. And I just want to share with you that the Lord has just answered our prayers in spades this year with the school that my son is attending. We literally could not be happier, blown away by how well he's doing and he has never been happier in his life which is the true litmus test I think that he is so happy and now we are currently on Christmas break and he literally said to me at the beginning of it mom I'm so worried I think that Christmas break is too long I think I'm gonna miss school too much and if you told me a year ago that this child was going to be saying that about school I just would never have believed you so Got to give glory to God for that, because that was a situation where I just did not see how it was going to work out. But of course, it worked out better than I ever could have imagined. So that's been a really joyful piece of the puzzle this year. But there's been lots of other logistics that have been challenging um, with Baby Jack and with lots of other things at work, changing plans. We've had just a really crazy season at Pink Salt Riot of just issues arising around just people's health, really. Like we've had multiple health issues that required surgeries and leaves of absence and all kinds of things that were unexpected. And so there's been lots of rolling with the punches for everyone. Um, My family went through like a seven week like doldrums of sickness where I think I worked maybe three days. Um, And it was just, you know, through November and early December, it was just crazy. And so it's been really interesting, the juxtaposition of this sort of new intimacy with God that God has invited me into this fall and just the utter chaos of external life. And so I've had a lot of time to sit with that and pray with that. And it's interesting how much the message that keeps coming up is that this is for your good. Like this is even this, even this seven weeks of everybody being sick, even you being sick, even waking up all through the night, just that there's always something there that he does have for me. And we aren't required to pick up on that. We aren't required to find that. It's not like he's going to keep keep us in pain or suffering or something like that until we learn the lesson. But there is a lesson or or something at the very least that he wants to share with us in all of these things. And um, it's so much less than I ever would have thought before about kind of punishment or you you deserve this or something like that. It's so much more about his grace and really allowing us to walk through these things with him because these are really the things that knit us to him. And so one night as I was praying for the healing of my toddler as he's, you know, just in pain with this awful ear infection, praying over his bed and just like, Lord, you know, I've seen you heal people before. I know that you can do this. 
why is it that you're not saying yes to this right now? And I don't feel like he answered that question directly, but I, I did feel like he said to me, you know, don't you think I know what it's like to watch my son suffer? Don't you think I know what it's like to, you know, walk through this kind of pain? And, and what an opportunity to learn about my heart right now. And so didn't still wasn't happy that my toddler had an ear infection, still wasn't happy to be up all night. But what a gift, really, for the Lord to trust me with this opportunity to come into intimacy with him by seeing his heart, by experiencing his heart for my own child, the way that he experienced in a much more comprehensive way than I did, his love for his own son when he sent Jesus to die for us. And so there's been lots of little graces like that. If you've been following along on social media, you might have noticed that we did No Plan November. So all of this craziness was just kind of um, piling up and piling up. And so at the beginning of November, I really felt like the Lord invited me into like, let's drop the charade. Like, let's be clear about the fact that you have none of this under control. Like you are not making any of these things happen. You're just kind of playing dodgeball with what's going on right now. And let's step into that intentionally. Let's, you know, the Lord was inviting me to stop making my plans, not forever, not because planning is evil or bad or anything like that, but just for a set amount of time to really let him show me that he can hold up his end of the deal more than I trust him to a lot of the time, that he can really fill in the gaps. And then when we give him space, the space that we can discover when we don't feel every minute and plan everything, that really incredible things happen. And so I did that through the month of November. And I don't think I like intentionally tried to keep it going in December, but it just kind of kept going because it was so clear that my plans were coming to not. And so I was just like, yeah, let's just, we're just doing this right now. And so if you're interested in walking through your own what we called it was a control fast, really. So in November, we called it No Plan November, but I've also put together all the materials, calling it a 30-day control fast that you can do at any time. And if 30 days is too much, do a one-week control fast. All of the, you know, general guidelines and stuff like that stays the same, but just give the Lord that gift of space. Do it for one day if it terrifies you to commit to any more of that, where you just really intentionally give him the space. There's a PDF that's linked in the show notes that you can check out that has a lot more like those specifics. I'm not going to go real in depth here uh, on the podcast today, but check that out if you're interested and learn more about how you can give God space in your life to not cling to your plans, to let go of the illusion of control and really let him be the one that's directing your steps, which is what we're all called to. And so, um, just so many good stories from that. I'm sure I will tell you know more of them over time on the podcast, but one that I just love that I can't not share is from um, early November. I have started being invited to speak a lot more op- a lot more often. And that is what I really want to do. That's like where my heart is for ministry. And if you're listening to my podcast, you probably at least passably enjoy listening to me speak. Um, If you don't, you can stop listening. That's okay. You don't have to keep going. Um, But we have been having more and more opportunities for me to go speak. And it really came to a head in the first week in November. I had three speaking engagements in that week. And so I um, did the first one on Wednesday, went great, did the second one on Friday, started losing my voice. And I was like, okay, this is getting a little like sketchy. And by the end of it, I literally was like full on adolescent teenage boy, um, you know, losing my voice, cutting out, and it was not great, but everybody stayed with me and it went okay. Um, But then Saturday was going to be my first time speaking at a large youth event. And I was so excited about it. I was going to speak about um, prophetic gifts and healing and um, just totally game and ready to go. I wake up on Saturday morning and I have absolutely no voice whatsoever. I feel fine and I don't have any like sick 
um, symptoms, like other than no voice. And I hadn't been screaming. I hadn't had any reason to really lose my voice. And I didn't have any other symptoms. And so I woke up in the morning and I went to my husband. I was kind of like, do I go? Do I, you know, I was going to have a booth for Pink Salt Riot at this event as well. So I was like, well, maybe I can just go and do the booth. You know, I can hold up signs (laughs) to communicate with people. Um, And, you know, both of us were just like, well, it doesn't really seem like I'm not supposed to go. And so I went and I all through the day praying. My talk wasn't until 4 p.m. So all through the day praying, Lord, do you want me to find somebody else? Is there someone else you're inviting to speak right now? Like I will be docile. And, you know, if this isn't the opportunity for me, I accept that. I'll lay this opportunity down. But no, no, the answer just keeps coming back. Like, nope, it's fine. It's fine. God was not worried. And so I was like, okay, here we go. So come like 3 p.m., I go to pray um, before my talk while a friend of mine stayed with my booth. I go to pray and I was like, okay, still having me talk, still don't have a voice, still don't really know what we're doing here. And I felt like the Lord was saying, yeah, that's still the plan. And then he also said, and we're also going to talk about something different than you had planned. So again, I was like, all right, I'm game. I trust you. This was early on in No Plan November, so fresh in my mind that I'm not the one making the plan. And so I go into this breakout talk that I'm giving, and you guys, literally, I have no voice and no talk. Like, there is not less that I could have gone into that room with. There's there. I mean, maybe, like, I could have been crippled in some way, but, like, I'm, like, bare, bare minimum showing up to this. And I don't want to brag, and I don't think that this is bragging because of the clear limitations that I had going into this situation, but you guys, I have never given such a good talk in my career. And it was such a huge gift because... I had a microphone, so that's kind of how we made up for the voice thing is that I, you know, was able to speak into a microphone. And so I'm speaking, whispering (laughs) into this microphone and the Holy Spirit's just giving me it one word, one sentence, one idea at a time. And I will forever be thankful for that experience because that was one of the greatest gifts that the Lord ever could have given me right at the beginning of inviting me into this journey of speaking because all illusion that it's me is already gone. And I'm very thankful that he did it that way instead of like a massive crash and burn. Not that I could not have a massive crash and burn in the future. That could still be on the docket somewhere. But I'm thankful that this first one was so gentle to just really show me how faithful he is in that and how much it really is about showing up and bringing him. And that's what I've said, you know, so often. So that was one of the the big highlights for sure of No Plan November for me was this opportunity to speak just fully under his wing, really, to lose the illusion that I have to bring something, generate something, convince someone of something, I don't. It's all in his hands. I get to help. And that's because he, you know, it's by his pleasure that I get to help, that he's given me these gifts. And so just the freedom that I've been able to find in using those gifts since then has just been amplified by that experience. So I'm very, very thankful for that. And then, and that was like right at the beginning of like just the sick saga. So then we went into like seven weeks of sickness, um, much felt much less gentle (laughs) than that lesson. Um, There was a lot more tears involved, a lot more middle of the night. But again, that was a grace too to be able to really enter into that time of suffering with the Lord and walk through it with him. 
And um, that really brings us to now. The Lord has really convicted me to plan differently after No Plan November. I am a big business planner. You know, obviously I had last entire year of podcasts recorded by April. There was obviously some planning that went into that. And I like that. That makes me feel in control. I enjoy doing it. It makes me feel very professional. And I think that that's one of the things that the Lord is chipping away at in me is really this lie that like adults are professional and that things need to be planned, polished, finished, double checked before they're shared. And, you know, it's a fine line and there's always a lot of refining in these lessons that the Lord is teaching me because it's also we don't want to go all the way to, you know, confessional reality TV where I'm just sharing whatever, whenever, in whatever state. There's a lot of discernment that goes into that. But um, the Lord has been inviting me into a lot more moment to moment what's really going on here. And so here I am right at the end of December recording this podcast to share with you right at the beginning of January. And so that is a perfect segue into just talking about a little bit of how this year is going to be different. In At the end of November, end of No Plan November, it was time to do some planning for 2023. Um, the Lord doesn't ask us to just totally like give up all structure and proceed with no plan. You know, running a business with employees, it's important that there's some planning so that we know where we're going and can go there together. So I sat down to plan, but the way that I had planned in the past just did not feel authentic anymore. I really wanted to plan with Jesus more intentionally. And so I created this series of questions really to just journal through with the Lord about what his heart is for this first quarter of the year. And that's kind of how we're going to break things down is a lot more by quarters than months. And so when I prayed about, Lord, what is it that you want to really share with people in this first part of 2023? I felt like the answer so clearly was that he is here. Just that presence of God, practicing the presence of God, and how much that is something that feels very unattainable for a lot of people. I know that for so much of my life, that seemed like just a, um, you know, random event of memory where like, did I think of this enough? And that kind of determines how good a Christian I am, Um, where it was very detached from the relationship with God. And so that's the specific piece of things that I want to spend our time on this month is how can we really grow the authenticity and the intimacy of that relationship with God so that it's so much more like thinking of your spouse or significant other or your child where you just want to, you love them. They are like, integral to your life and it would be weird to not think about them frequently and especially when they're with you and that's the way it is with the lord he's always with us and when we enter into that authentic intimacy with him it's just it would be weird to not be aware that he's with us all the time but that is so much different than entering into it like, oh my gosh, I need to like set multiple alarms on my phone or whatever to remember. And I don't want to demonize those things because they're helpful memory tools. My phone has like 90 alarms for all different things at any given time. Um, And so I do use those things, but that's kind of a, that's kind of a training wheels thing where we want to use that while it's helpful. We also want to graduate from that. We also want to move more towards that really self-directed, like or or really answering the Lord's call to think of him because we're not the ones that are creating that impetus. He's always inviting us to think of him. What changes is our ability to respond to that and say, yeah, like, what is it that you're thinking in this situation, Lord? Why is it that you brought that person to your mind, to my mind? What is it that that memory that's coming up in my mind has to do with? I'm just entering a lot more into the conversation of the everyday with the Lord. So 
to do that, we're going to have a, tons of amazing tools. We're going to have great guests on this quarter talking about how we can do that more practically. We're going to be working on really bringing this down to the daily practical level so that it's not something that, again, seems esoteric only for monks and people that this is their whole life, something that's approachable for busy people with full modern lives that still use cell phones and et cetera. <laughs> uh, people that are fully engaged in the world around them and how that doesn't disqualify us from fully engaging with God. So we have a lot of amazing products coming out this quarter as well on that front. They're not available. The, the Practice of the Presence of God products are going to come out a little later this quarter. Right now, though, our Word of the Year is available. So if you do Word of the Year We've got our custom pieces available. We've got exciting new pieces this year. Everything has been redesigned. So we have all new jewelry, all new necklaces and bracelets. Um, we have desk signs now that are perfect for men or women um, that you can have any word engraved on in this gorgeous cherry wood. It's really, really beautiful. And we also have word of the year journals, which are just simple guided journals. There's like a question for about every month or so. So it's not necessarily going to be your everyday journal for the entire year, but it will be where you kind of trace your walk with your word of the year with the Lord. And there's prompts throughout to kind of get the ball rolling and get the wheels turning about what is it that God has really been doing and showing me um, this year with my word. And I created that journal because the last several years of doing word of the year, there's a lot of things that I wish I would have captured at the time, sort of all together in one place versus sprinkled throughout all of my journals. So this is a consolidated place for you to really put everything um, with your walk, with your word of the year together. And so I'm really excited about all those things. You can check out the link in show notes. And even if you have no intention of purchasing a word of the year piece, that's totally fine. We also have an amazing list of 101 great word of the year for Christians. They're unique ones you probably haven't thought of. Some of them might be, but other, a lot of them are unique options that if you want something that's really specific to you, you can read through that list, pray through that list and see if God highlights something for you. And there's also printable banners that just say my word of the year is and you can write your word, um, cut out the banner and just have that be something you post in your office, in your home, in your studio, wherever it is that you're going to see it on a regular basis as just a very simple way to keep your word of the year top of mind if you're not going to be adding a word of the year piece um, to your life this year. So all of the links to all of those things are in the show notes. I'd love for you to check it out. And when we come back next week, we're going to be talking about um, how the presence of God and, and how we feel about the presence of God is really tied to what our view of God is. So if we have a negative view of God, the fact that he's omnipresent is probably not something we want to dwell on, right? So we want to think about why is it that we view God the way we view God and how does that inform how we feel about his omnipresence? So um, next week, we'll be chatting about that. And I'm so, so happy to be back with you. I love you all and I will see you next week. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of the Authentic Uprising podcast. It is always a joy to be with you. I encourage you to subscribe to our podcast, subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, whichever place you most prefer or do it all if that is what floats your boat. We would love to continue to get to know you better and grow in relationship with you. And so I encourage you to check out the links in both our show notes and our YouTube description that tell you more about where you can connect with us elsewhere. The two big things we have going on besides the podcast is our shop that is full of reminders of who you are in God, helping you to really grow in that radical art of standing in who you are and giving gifts that help others to do the same. The other big thing we have going on is the Uprising Academy. This is all of our formation um, programs, workshops, retreats. Everything is available virtually and on demand where you can sign up and continue to learn more about radically standing in what God says about you 
especially if you are in a place in your life where you are not being fed the way that you long to be fed, whether it's in your community, whether it's at your church, whatever it is, there is more for you and we can absolutely walk with you into it through the Uprising Academy. All those links are in our show notes. And if you enjoyed this episode, I encourage you to leave a review. Reviews are the number one way that we help get in front of new faces, new people that are able to be touched by the radical art of standing and what God says about us. I love you. I'm praying for you. I hope you have an amazing week.